Hey, kids. I'll wait till we get a few people there. Let it build up a little bit. But, uh, hey, man, it's me. And I'm fine, kind of. I had a heart attack, a massive heart attack, and very nearly died uh, the other night, Sunday night. I was doing two shows, um, which we were shooting for, for a comedy special. And after the first show, which was great, two hours, and I was like, oh, shit, like, we got one more show. This is going to be great. I started feeling nauseous, felt a little nauseous. And then uh, I uh, tried to lay down on the floor. I was like, hey, man, I'll, I'll just lay down for a bit. And when I was laying down on the floor, I wound up uh, um, getting ill, like threw up, and but mostly bile. So I just thought, like, you know, I got some bad milk. That was it. I, I was honestly under the impression that I'd gotten some fucking bad milk. So I went to... Uh, uh, lay down at the theater, at the Alex Theater, and everyone there was very nice. And uh, Jordan, Chase's wife, uh, who runs our company, and uh, Emily, who does my hair, um, were both there, and they were like keeping an eye on me and stuff. And I was in that sickly, like I don't want, I want to be alone. I'm laying, I'm laying in a dark room and shit like that. Just trying to get over it so I can do the next show once they loaded everybody in. And then I was like, I want to lay down on a couch. Is there a couch anywhere? So. I went and found a couch, and I laid down on the couch, and uh, flowers, people, nice people been sending flowers and stuff. Went and laid down on the couch, and I couldn't get comfortable, which is weird for me. Like, I can get comfortable anywhere and shit. And I could not get comfortable laying on my stomach, laying on my back, my sides and stuff. And then I started feeling pressure on my chest, but not like, you know, there's an elephant on my chest. I just couldn't catch my breath. Honestly, I was never really in pain. And even in the ER, they're like, how much pain are you in on a one to 10? I was like, I, I'm, I'm not really in pain. I just couldn't catch my breath. So because of that, and because I'm 47, like I didn't piece together heart attack, even when I was sitting there going like my chest is heavy and stuff. And even though my father died at age 67 of a massive heart attack, and even though my mother has heart problems and she has two stents in uh, her arteries in her heart, I never in a million years thought it was heart attack. Honestly, I thought I was just like mucusy from, you know, I, I'd smoked like two joints early in the day. But I hadn't smoked for hours at this point, been like four hours since I'd even smoked. So it wasn't even that. I was like, what could it be? So finally, you know, I was like, uh, I said to Jordan and Emily, I was like, I couldn't, I was trying to sit up. I was just trying to breathe. It was tough to catch my breath. You could breathe like shallow. But if you look for a deep breath, it was like, like you had to get over a cliff. There was a hurdle for each deep breath. So finally I said to him, I was just like, do me a favor. Uh, maybe we should call a doctor. And they were ready the whole time uh, to do so. And then they told me, they're like, there's an ambulance coming. It's Sunday night. There's no doctors and stuff. I'm like, an ambulance? Oh, man. For a minute. I was like, oh, man, this is embarrassing. So the paramedics came. Wonderful. First responders, man. They, uh, they, they, they uh, were very patient with a guy who was... Never mind the heart attack. Deathly afraid of lifting his shirt up. Um, you know, that's part of the deal, right? Some of the, like, we're, you're, you're, we've called the, you know, the paramedics. We got to check in stuff and they, you know, put monitors on you or whatever. Got to do your blood pressure. So instantly, you know, they start doing what they do and lift up your shirt. And I'm like, whoa, I'm like yanking them down my shirt. And it became a struggle, a battle with these cats. Because, you know, they looked at me. I was profusely sweating and I sweat like when I fucking breathe, but this is more than I've ever sweated in my life. So they're looking at me going like this cat has no idea what's going on. Does he? And I'm like, don't lift my shirt up, please. And so they're talking to me and asking me all the questions and shit like that. And, uh, you know, I was like, Hey man, uh, I, I feel okay. And they're like, um, we think you might be having uh, a heart episode right now. So how about, uh, you know, we, we put these monitors on you and, so they did, and they did my blood pressure, and then the guy was like, I'm, I'm going to put, this is nit nitrous, I'm, or nitro, whatever they call it. I'm going to put it under your tongue, lift your tongue up. And I did, and he squirted it under there. That happened five more times. Once he did that twice, then I started catching on to be like, I wonder if, I wonder if this is worse than I assume. And then I heard somebody, in, there was like six people, and I was too busy like trying to keep my shirt down to concentrate. But one person said, heart attack. And that's when I was like, it, what? No, surely not. And they're like, we're going to take you to the hospital just to make sure, 
You're, you didn't have a heart attack? And I was like, okay, that's totally great. And they took me to the hospital. They put me in one of those chairs, loaded me into the ambulance. And as I left, I saw people, I think they were in line for the next show. And, you know, they were like, do it up, Kev, because I guess the people um, at the theater or, or the folks with Comedy Dynamics who I was shooting the special with told the crowd that I was, uh, uh, which would call it, um, uh, I had food poisoning. They were like, because, you know, that was the nearest thing could figure. They're like, what, he threw up? I guess maybe he had food poisoning. Wasn't food poisoning. So uh, I got in the ambulance. They brought me to the to uh, the closest hospital, Glendale Adventist. And if you're ever going to have some sort of heart episode, for the love of God, have it in Glendale. Like, this hospital is, I guess, clearly, well, they told me they're, like, they're considered one of the, the best in the country uh, for cardiology. Um, and, and my doctor, late night, motherfucker saved my life. He my boy, man. Like, yes, this is where he works. They brought him in and stuff. So it was, so they get me to the hospital. They get me to the emergency room. Not, not the emergency room. Yeah, the emergency room first. And, you know, uh, they're, they're shifting you on the bed. You see four people picking you up and sliding you over. It's like all the shit that you see, you like, on Grey's Anatomy and whatnot. And so they're asking you questions. Everything's moving at a brisk pace. What's your name? And I was like, I'm, I'm going to get all these right. Kevin Smith. Like, I'm good at this test. Uh, your birthday, where do you live, and all that stuff. Uh, what's your mom's name? What's your wife's name and stuff? So, you know, I was pretty much just in bed, you know, in the ER and, and going, like, uh, I, I think it's going to be okay. Like, I feel, I, you know, I just have some, I can't catch my breath. They're like, do you have heaviness in your chest? Do you feel like like there's an elephant sitting on your chest? I was like, no, not an elephant. I said, but, like, I, I definitely have a hard time catching my breath. And uh, so they put me on monitors and all this shit and then they're like uh okay we're gonna take you up to the emergency room and i was like what and they're like you've had a major heart attack massive was the word you've had a massive heart attack and uh your lad is completely blocked 100 percent blocked, or something like that so they're like we're gonna take you well they didn't know that part yet they're like we're gonna take you up to the er because you've had a massive heart attack and we have to look inside your heart right away and i was like how's that happen and you know because they're starting to pump you with some uh, drugs. Uh, and so uh, they said, uh, we're going to go up through your groin and into your heart. And I, right then and there, I was like, this shit is serious, son. So I was like, okay. And I never got scared. Like at one point, the, the one of the paramedics was like, you're being real calm, man. That's great. That's, that's, that's going to help a lot. And then there was someone else behind him who was like, this was going to save his life. And little things like that, I was like, what, what does that mean? Like, I, again, I still didn't know like what was going on. So so here's me in the, in the, in the uh, emergency room dying, literally dying. And this was my biggest concern. Guy comes in, he goes, I'm going to have to shave your groin. You take your shirts off, I have to shave your groin. I said, for what? He goes, they go up through your groin to get into your heart. And I said, I, I don't, I don't want to do that. And he goes, you have to. And I said, well, uh, but I, I don't, I don't want to. My biggest fear in life, death, number one, number two, People seeing my dick, like that's, that's it. Terrified of that. Oh my God. I've gone on my way my whole life to not let my fucking dick be seen and shit. Never wanted to go to a hospital or a doctor for that very reason. Don't want to be judged. Obviously small. So it was funny. I was talking to the doctor at one point today and the doctor goes, we were all talking about it. Cause I told him, I was like, I'm so scared. People talk about my dick. He goes, we were all talking about it. It's huge. <laughs> he was funny. He's lying. It ain't. So the guy goes, I got to shave you. And I said, I, I said, I, I can't do it. He goes, I got to take your underwear off. I said, bro, if you take my underwear off, I will have another heart attack right here. Like, I can't, I can't do that. He goes, what are we supposed to do? And I said, well, you show me where, where you got to shave. And so he, he showed me like in the groin where it was. And so I was I'm making deals with this dude. I'm literally dying. And I'm making deals with this dude going, look, how about I pull the underwear over as far as I can. And then you get in there and, and shave. And that way I can keep my underwear on. <laughs> my man was looking at me like, okay, bro, <laughs> I get it. Your dick's small. So I did that. I was, and then I remember them, you know, putting me onto, onto the elevator and taking me up to the emergency room. So I got into the emergency room and that's where Dr. Leidenheim was. The guy saved my life. And I said, uh, Hey man, how are you? And he goes, how are you feeling? Looks like you had a heart attack. He's going, we're going to go up your groin to see inside, make sure the artery's clear. If it's not, we're going to put a stent in there. And all of this is happening very fast. And I know about these stent things because my mom, 
has two stents in, in two of her arteries in her heart. My dad, as previously mentioned, died of a massive heart attack. So it's in my family, like genetically. The doc told me, he's like, you can't, like, nothing you can do about this. Genetically speaking, you were just dealt these cards. You're like, I got the good and the bad from mom and dad. And, you know, they made me who I am, but they also gave me a weak ticker, I guess. Or at least one aspect of a weak ticker. So he goes up. And the whole time, like, you know, they're like, we got to take your gear off. And they're taking my clothes off. And they're taking my jersey off. And I'm holding on to my jersey. I was like, no, I can't let go of this. And my hat. And I was like, oh, no, 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 you can't take that. And they're like, bro, you're dying. So then they, you know, ultimately, I remember at one point somebody was like, why does he have underwear on still? Get him off. And I was arguing with him and trying to hold him up and stuff. And then I took my shirt and I was covering myself uh, ooh, with it, like a modesty rag and whatnot. And they were like, I, finally, somebody had the good sense to be like, he doesn't quite realize that hiding his dick is not the most important thing right now. So they went in there and went up my leg and uh, with my groin and uh, and completely went in. They found the, the LAD was a 100% blocked. Put a stent in. Bam, here I am. Crazy. Dude literally saved my life. Isn't that nuts? Um, you know, I was like, hey, man, I just lost like 85 pounds and I walk every day and stuff like that. And he's like, yeah, he's going as that's good but it, he's going this started a long time ago he's going like you know all that plaque in that artery and stuff he's going plus like because of my genetics i got real thin artery there or whatever fuck so i you know that's what happened and then they brought me back to the room and and i recovered all yesterday so i saw so many nice well wishes from people uh online and i just wanted to say thank you it was wonderful it was kind of like like uh yesterday reading all the people i've heard from people i haven't heard from in years i read stuff online really nice sweet things but it was kind of like being like knowing or being there reading your eulogy like i you know i i saw what life will be like kind of when i die what the reaction would be if i died and it was very sweet like i felt like oh right on you know most days i'm like most people must think i'm an asshole but yesterday they didn't like there was a lot of positive shit man and uh i remember i remember like uh you know reading like kind things from people who normally don't say kind things about my me or my career and i was like god damn it like this is this is what's gonna be like when i die one day like hopefully that people say nice things and i realized as long as i keep my nose clean from now until the end as long as i don't wake up with like you know they don't fire me with a a, a dead girl or a live boy i, I they'll, they might you know be kind at the end you know, it won't be one of these people, won't be one of these people to die with like, good riddance, you fat fuck. It was very, very sweet. So I heard from people I haven't heard from in a long time, heard from people I never heard from before. Poor Chris Pratt, one of my favorite actors on the planet, you know, fucking put up a nice tweet where he's just like, hey man, I don't know you that much, but like, I love clerks and I'm praying for you. And apparently like some people were like, fuck your prayers and attacked him and shit. And then James Gunn had to jump into it and be like, hey, nothing wrong with praying for a person, man. Uh, yes. That, and number one, oh my God, thanks to Chris Pratt. How sweet was that? Star-Lord praying for me. Um, uh, but number two, um, yeah, please don't fight over stuff like that. It's a waste of time. Um, it, uh, your prayer, whether you're religious or not, somebody's saying, I'll pray for you. This is like a good intention. It's very nice. Especially because it's not like Chris Pratt was like, move over. I'm going to reach my hands into his chest and save fucking Silent Bob's life myself. But, uh, it was... It, all of this, very surprising, is my point. Wasn't expected. Some people, like, how I saw online, some people were like, how could he not have expected this? Like, uh, he was too fat to fly guy. I lost, like, 85, 90 pounds since then. So, it, you know, some shit, like, I went through lifestyle changes, and some shit don't matter. Some shit you just can't beat because it's genetic. So, what happens now? What's going to go, what goes forward? Uh, apparently... Um, I become, I will become a prescription man. I'm going to have lots of pills. I'm going to be one of those people like my mom. It's got pills all the time. So they put me on blood thinners. They'll put me on Lipitor. Um, uh, they'll put me on a beta blocker and stuff like that. Uh, and that's the biggest change. Then I will start seeing a cardiologist on a regular basis. Um, uh, because now I'm this guy. Uh, but I'm very, like, I'm well. Like, I'm, I'm not, you know, well, I'm, I am well. Like, I'm sitting up talking and walking around and shit like that. And a lot of people were, were you know, I saw online, like, this is going to take a long recovery. And really, it's not. Medical science is so fucking amazing, man, right now. But I talked to Dr. Leidenheim today, and I was like, I feel great. And, you know, he was like, well, you're, you had a blocked LAD for who knows how long and stuff. 
And so now the blood is flowing, man. So I feel like I'm on a, like a natural high, um, which is true because I haven't smoked weed in like two days. So for anybody who's like, he's a weed addict. Hey, man, two days went by. I was not thinking about weed when I was. I ain't even thinking about weed now. Also not thinking about food. It's crazy. I've lost my appetite for a lot of stuff. Um, but I got a zest for life. And as I said in my piece that I wrote on, on Instagram and Facebook, there was this moment where I was like, I, I'm, I might die. Like all this talk. And like at one point somebody said, get the morphine. And I was like, morphine? Like where? Why? I'm not that guy. I ain't interested in morphine. And if they're pulling out morphine, that usually means bad shit. So when I heard that, you know, I started going like, this could be it. This might be it. And so I thought about my life and I thought about everything. You know, it's not like my life flashed before my eyes, but I had a good long moment to think, you know, and, and like, what did I want to do? Do I want to bargain with God in that moment and be like, please fucking save me and stuff like that. After dogma, that was probably not going to happen. So I just thought about everything and thought about like, you know, my parents and how they raised me and and my brother and my sister and, and my friends and my wife and my kid and my like this weird, wonderful career that I've had for so long and stuff. And I was like content. Like it was weird. I don't know how to say it. I, I didn't want to die. Don't get me wrong. But I was like, well, if the ferryman comes tonight, I got to pay him. Like what a ride it's been. What an incredible fucking ride, man. So there was calm. So even as the dude was like, we're going up your groin and we're in your heart. And I was like, I was calm. It was weird. I was always afraid that I would be, you know, terrified of dying. I watched, you know, my dad didn't see him die, but was there when my dad passed. My brother actually saw him die. Um, was there when my grandmother died? Like I've seen people die and I was always terrified. Like I like life, like life worked out for me. And so I don't ever want to let it go. But in that moment, you know, even though I was 47 and stuff like that, I was like, well, that, that'll do it. Like, I, that'll do, pig. I felt like I was babe. I was like, that'll do, pig. That'll do. And I was not, not, I was ready. I was, I was, I was okay with it. I was bummed that we weren't going to get to make Jane's on Bob reboot. That was the only big regret. Of course, not seeing my wife and kid and stuff like that. That goes without saying. But professionally speaking, I was like, if, I, if only we had made that movie, that would have been a nice one to go out on. So now we still got time. Um, but there it is, folks. I'm, I'm fine. Look at me. I'm in my robe and shit. I was walking around the hospital and like some of the nurses were like, we all think it's hysterical that you wear your robe. You got comfortable very quick. You've only been here 36 hours. I was like, well, um, so it's, it's all good. Thank you for your incredible well wishes, uh, friends, family, people I've never fucking met. Uh, it, it meant the world. I, I sat there reading tons of it yesterday. Uh, I'll read more of it today. I was supposed to be making the Goldbergs this week, directing the season finale. Unfortunately, this is going to preempt that. Uh, they want me to just sit around the house and convalesce for a week. I'm not allowed to drive. Isn't that fucking weird? Um, but other than that, like, uh, I'm, I'm okay, man. And, and mercifully, Jenny was here. <laughs> um, but uh, she slept here last night. She slept on the bed. I slept here on the on the fucking couch thing. But we're ready to go home. Dr. Ladenheim came in, cleared me, man. Uh, oh, this guy. This guy's the Batman, a fucking cardiologist, man. He was so calm and fucking... He was like a vigilante. He wouldn't let that shit. He was like, he sees that LAD. He's like, come here, Joker. He stuffed him in fucking Arkham. I'm using comic book terms so people that don't understand medicine will understand this. In any event, so far, so good. Still standing, folks. Thank you for all your incredible well wishes and whatnot. Um... And hopefully uh, see you guys very soon. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go convalesce. Good talking to you.